Sonia Delaunay painted this picture, age 29, in 1914, shortly before the outbreak of the First World War. She painted it in Paris, and it's still there, hanging with other modern works in the galleries of the Beauberg. It's a big picture, enlivened with clear, bold colours and dominated by circular forms made up of rings and blocks. The elements are simple enough. Yet because of the striking and often beautiful colour contrasts, the picture as a whole seems infinitely rich in the means it uses to create the pattern we see. The title, Electric Prisms, seems to allude both to the source of light and the means by which it is refracted into the various shades of the spectrum. Among the many colours, the three primaries, red, blue and yellow, stand out most. The overall sense of harmony in the picture comes largely from the contrast of these three colours with their complementary colours, orange, violet and green. But here, near the centre, we find the contrast of red and violet, and a visual discord is established. And through this means, Sonia Delaunay is able to fix our attention on this part of the picture as a possible starting point for taking a closer look. But when we do consider the whole picture once again, we notice a spiral form leading into the centre. It establishes a sense of direction, a line cutting across the flat pattern of colour. And looking from one section to another, we notice other aspects. Above all, we realise how our perception of each part of the picture, shape as well as colour, is conditioned by the shapes and colours placed nearby. Sonia Delaunay also made use of this effect in a dress she designed and wore at the same time the picture was painted. This photograph gives a rough idea of how it looked. But we have to imagine it as rather like this painting in its appearance. It must have dazzled people at the time, and probably puzzled them too. Sonia Delaunay's picture, though, is in one way very much a product of its time. Five years earlier, in 1909, the Italian futurist Marinetti had announced the death of moonlight as a way of rejecting the past with all its romantic notions and of embracing the future. In place of moonlight, Marinetti wanted to see electric light. An element of the same attitude is indicated in the title of Sonia Delaunay's picture, Electric Prisms. And this also tells us that there is more to the painting than an interesting pattern. Paris, along with New York and London, had been one of the first cities to use electric lighting on a large scale. And this new aspect of the way the city looked was soon reflected in art. In this sketch from 1913, made in preparation for the large painting we are looking at, we can clearly make out a figure standing under a lamp. We can see at the same time that the sketch plays with abstract coloured shapes. But this aspect seems to have its starting point in a simple street scene. And looking back at our first picture, we could also see these circles as the effect of dazzling street lamps, softened, reflected and refracted by interposed shapes and shadows, such as one might find in any street. But there's also another element that needs considering. At the left, as if stuck on the surface, is a rectangular box enclosing several lines of writing. We can make out several names. The name Sandra, for example. Blaise Sandra, the poet. A name evoking the dazzling literary life of Sonia Delaunay's Paris. As in many periods of great artistic innovation, painters and writers in Paris then were deeply interested in each other's experiments. The use of text in pictures such as this is matched by the attempts of poets, such as Apollinaire, to form images out of patterns of words. A year earlier, Sonia Delaunay had used this text as a form of announcement to advertise the work she'd produced in collaboration with the poet Blaise Sandra. Even here, one can see that the writing is more than a text. It is a very attractively coloured pattern. And in its repetition in electric prisms, this is even clearer. It stands as proof of the harmonious combination of two mediums, verbal and visual, and a record of the harmonious collaboration of two artists. The work that Sonia Delaunay had wanted to announce was a fascinating one. Baffling in its oddity, dazzling in its beauty, defying easy classification in traditional categories. 
It was a combination of text and picture. It had a more conventional narrative which used words, and also a parallel narrative which used colour and form. The text tells of the long, long journey from Moscow to Paris made by a young poet and a prostitute. The story is interspersed with the refrain, Tell me, Blaise, are we very far from Amart? Both narratives, the textual one and the visual one, end with a simplified image of the Eiffel Tower, which stands between word and picture. The poet Apollinaire understood very well what Sonia Delaunay and Blaise Sandra were attempting to do here. He described their collaboration as a way of trying to make the eye get used to taking in the whole of a poem at a glance, just as it might take in the whole of a picture. Sonia Delaunay's work appealed very much to the Parisian avant-garde in the years before the First World War. But she started life in quite another world. She was born in 1885 in the Ukraine, and then adopted by a cultured and wealthy couple who brought her, when she was five, to live in St. Petersburg. She was lively and very imaginative. Here we see her dressed up in Egyptian costume, and her artistic talent was soon evident. She went first to study in Germany, and when she was 20, moved to Paris. Here she met and married the artist Robert Delaunay. In this painting from 1913, we see Sonia's record of the Balboulier dance hall, where she and Robert went every week. Their dancing, too, was part of their work as artists. They dressed up in fantastic costumes and saw an evening's dancing as enjoyable work rather than relaxation. It was a new way of bringing art to the people. Although this picture seems at first to be little more than another colored pattern, we can soon pick out the figures of dancing couples. Sonia, dressed like one of her own paintings, was the toast of the avant-garde of Paris at this time. In 1914, Blaise Sandra wrote a poem about her as she looked wearing this dress. After the end of the war, Sonia Delaunay found other ways to make art a part of life. She continued with her paintings, but she also worked as a designer for the fashion industry, devising new textures and patterns for cloth as well as clothes. And she also provided individual designs for rich clients, who were encouraged by her example to follow their fantasy. As well as clothes like the ones these models are wearing, Sonia Delaunay also designed schemes for interior decoration, and even patterns for the paintwork on cars. She had enormous success in these enterprises, and at each stage she let her art inform her designs, just as her designs suggested new ideas for her art. For her, art and life were one, and in this way she was an inspiration to many others. Even in her 80s, she was still playing such a role, continuing to work and still motivated by the idea of bringing art and life together. Looking back to 1914, we can see this picture as the beginning of this development. And in this one too painted by Robert Delaunay in the same year and showing Sonia in her dazzlingly colored dress. It's easy to imagine the strong impression she made in the dance hall. Finally, then, we can see this painting as a sort of self-portrait, not simply because it records the colorful appearance and the youthful energy of Sonia Delaunay, but also because it reflects her lasting strengths, originality, determination, and enthusiasm.